we will try our best to be crisp and short and try to close it in 15 minutes, right? So I think she cleverly said that 15 minutes is time to say that, right? Okay, I think before we start, I'm sure my colleagues or peers will agree with me that I was overwhelmed by this program. I didn't expect a program which is initiated and run by the government officials to be too technical. You know, if I, if I do a data analytics of the technical uh, verbos that I heard, it's, it was really a highly technical and therefore I'm at least personally a bit overwhelmed that government is getting so technical about it. Okay, so I'm very happy about it. Uh, the second thing is, um, I think I would want to start the discussion by giving a big hand to the government for this very great meeting. Uh, uh, I think she was in innocent Divya. So she was uh, making a presentation of the, you know, a high tech presentation in 10 minutes. Let me tell you, it's not 2050. Some of these systems are already running. You know, they are. They have not come to the world more because the legalities and the and the road situations are not permitting. But the technology is already there, and cars are running driverless. Yeah. Why I'm saying this is because if you tell me to each of the projects that she showed on that, you know, a driverless driver, electrified car. Uh, the, the drone delivering, you know, for all these projects, one university or the other is involved, you know, whether it's a Western university or maybe in Europe or something like that. So I think somebody rightly said the industry university uh, collaboration is at a very, very high and productive level in Western countries. I mean, we like it or not, we should agree to it. Yeah? We are doing our best for here, but I think we are still not there. There is much more to do. I agree both from you and me. In fact, I take it as a challenge that the government has thrown to us a challenge that, hey, I'm offering you all this. I go, if you want more budget, I will give it. Hey, guy, you come out and do what you can do. So I think the people sitting in this room, you and us, I think we have to do something, put our step foot forward. That's my sincere request. There may be problems, madam, you rightly pointed out in your panel discussion, but I think we can overcome that. I think probably grab this opportunity to do something. And as industry also, we discussed in all forums that day, university thing is not okay. So here is an opportunity at least for the state. I didn't expect a state government to launch a platform like this and do it. So I think we should put our bed foot forward. I think with that positive note, I open up to the panel. Uh, so maybe my first question is just quickly a few words about what do you think as an uh, industry can contribute to this from your perspective quickly. So first of all, I would like to start with uh, the difference between the knowledge and the skill. People have been talking about various high-end uh, courses like uh, Automation, robotics, artificial intelligence, machine, all buzzwords they've been talking. And I see this platform here, and uh, not only this platform, but there are so many other foreign universities are offering courses, and even in India also already open source uh, information is available. So we are trying to import so much, we are trying to import so much uh, information. The content is going to the students. You know, the, the student is in their palm, in their mobile, they can, they can just pick up and read. Uh, but Will that really help for the industry? For example, I'm an industry 4.0 guy. Day in and day out, I'm, I'm working with uh, global customers on industry 4.0. Even just before coming here, I was in a call with a, one of the global customers. So, but if I recruit a guy here uh, from any of the institutes uh, who have studied industry 4.0, the question is whether I can directly put him on the job. I doubt whether he has that skill. Though he had studied industry 4.0, but it cannot be converted to skill because it doesn't have any real-time experience. So that is what every subject matter uh, um, issue is. Even if it is a uh, design in a mechanical engineering, even though you teach or a CAD, but really if I come to the, if they come to the industry, if I give them a product and make the drawing, they will not be able to make it. They need some assistance. So the knowledge and skill that gap need to be filled, that is purely by uh, practical experience. And there are several tools which you have uh, discussed here. Um, al already you guys have, um, you know, the internship. Internship is a very, uh, you know, important element in a, uh, in a student's life. Um, I, I believe only four, three to four weeks internship every summer, I think, is being practiced in the in institutes nowadays. Three to four weeks is, is not at all sufficient because the first week they just go around and see the factory and uh, just get to know the company and then the third week they'll submit something and then come back. So in Western countries, uh, you can go to the website and see summer intern, spring intern, fall intern, all are 12 weeks program. So at least 12 weeks minimum they should spend in the industry. I don't know how you can include in your curriculum, but really at least minimum 12 weeks internship 
they have really helped them to interact with the industry and get to know and then put their knowledge into practice. In in that sense, you know, both industries as well as institutes can benefit, students can benefit in that sense. Like that projects, while selecting the projects, it should be more uh, of towards solving a problem with the industry problem. Industries can sponsor the project, they can come up with set of problems and students can go and solve the problems. Like that, there are so many things. My, my point here is converting the knowledge into skill is very important. So, considering the lack of time, I just stop here and give it to my other panelists. The, I think it's about the, what industry has is what is currently required and what's upcoming. I think if you are able to bring that connect, and the connect could be like a, for a non modular platform that make it a self learning platform in a way keep it updated every year at least you know the what's the latest what's the reference required uh, secondly of course all this uh, internship mentorship sponsorship all of that being discussed i think from the industry coming uh, you know i have that context and of course like uh, fellow uh, panelists here many of them are actually very actively interested in helping the colleges right in some way like in terms of internship or mentorship, all of the many of them, you know, all that they are looking for is some kind of a platform to be able to contribute. And I think this is a great platform to be able to do that. Uh, hopefully, I think if you do it right, if you get it right, I think I think it can be really impactful, I think, in my opinion. I think all that being discussed, I really liked internship, mentorship, and sponsorship. And all of that is realistically possible. I think, uh, I, I think the main thing that in any industry, I'm also, I'm, I also got placed with that example is because before we had a degree, uh, we had uh, two projects that we did in the industry, which we could talk about. This is 20 years back. Nowadays, what industries, because we know what the customers expect. So along with the project, the expectation is to be certified. So certification along with the internship and the placement adds up value for people. So industry-wise, I think one thing is it's good that Anmodharvan is having uh, proctored exams for the certifications and all done. But I think that's for another thing that probably industries can also help with to get certain skills certified before they actually come into the industry, which also improves the marketability of the um, particular uh, course or skill. So that is one thing that I would focus. Projects, internships are 20, 20 years back. Customers today look at how many people are certified and certification which are recognized across the board. Not, I'm not talking India, I'm talking worldwide. So that way, I think that that's something that also industry can contribute to ensure that the, the people are, you know, easily taken into the industry. First of all, uh, very happy to be uh, in front of all the learned professors and teachers. What industry can do to to academia? I mean. Uh, I have been a HR professional all along, 25 years. So uh, I have a 3D 3D printing machine back in my uh, office or at a factory installed a commission one year ago. I can I can give you practice. I mean that's what I can do. But uh, but the, the hard fact is that uh, I could I could hire only uh, very few few people against my requirement because they don't have the right kind of skill. So the the, the only fresher I could hire in the last. Uh, Six months uh, from the time this machine become operational is is a candidate who is very very strong in uh, the, the theory, the foundation, and and the presentation, communication. Finally, up to the point, you know, uh, I mean, like like you are always busy with your academic calendar, so you have a gap between you and me for fact, the practice. Uh, same like uh, when when it comes to factory or our industry for that matter, the first question. Uh, uh, being asked, you are all familiar with this, it's not new, uh, if by providing an internship or project, what is that the company is going to gain, you know? So that is the world we are living, day in and day out, dashboards, <laughs> reports, flash reports, you know, uh, metrics, all that. So, uh, the, the answer to the question Sri Ram asked is that, I can give you practice, but uh, that the student should be uh, deserving, qualified uh, to, to get there. Uh, I have two examples to say. One is uh, Prakashan is in front of me. We introduced an elective called Thermal Management for Electric Vehicles in PhD. Okay? We found it very useful. I mean, our own people came and taught that subject and we carefully framed the syllabus so that it completely can be used to, you know, put it in electric vehicles and it was a very useful thing and we found that's one of the very good way. I mean, go to, go to some subject, go a bit deeper, you know, look out what should, what should be done, come and teach to them. And I, I really found that in the eyes of the student, I mean, they were very useful. I think that's one way. 
And the other way is we also have a faculty development program. You know, we are requesting faculties to please stay away from your college for six months one year. Come to our company. We choose the subject and do it. But I'm sure, uh, yeah. No, I'm not joking. It's you can come on sabbatical, or if the institution is willing to pay you additionally, you will pay. We also pay you for the period for the whatever work you do in a minimum way. But we have a faculty development program. I think that's the best way. We learn theory from you. You learn practice from us. I think, and then you go back and you can train hundred more students because so. I think we are we are open to that. I think that's something also the others can focus on. I mean, uh, but but somehow I think we are not able to progress there. Because the lecturers and the professors are very, very busy and they are not in a position to come. And I think we should break this. Uh, thing. Yeah, that's what yeah. Quickly, I think because we have 14 minutes, I think I'm sharing the other question. One is soft skills. I think people talk about communication, leadership. I think this is very, very essential. And uh, we know how a fresher looks like. Uh, I don't know, nobody talked about it. Is four years, uh, maybe it's a very political question. Should we finish engineering in four years? Why can't we take it for five years? I mean, why should we hurry to take up a job when you're just 20, 21 and start working? Learn a bit more. You know? I, mean, I, mean, I mean, this is my personal view, but that's not the topic. But soft skills, leadership, communication, presentation. I, I, I think all I these five programs. Five years where one year sabbatical for him to just travel exactly, the world. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Uh, but what I'm saying is, see, this is very easy for the industry. You know, we run all these soft programs. You know, we, we got an OD department, we run all these programs. It's very logically easier to put the students from the but we should have a basically forum or set up like that. So what do you think we can contribute towards that? Because that's one a very, very important thing. I think all the government officials have mentioned that we have to develop that, you know. So any quick ideas how as the industry we can contribute to that? I, right away, I, at least what, whatever happens, you know, yes, I do agree that that is a big gap, okay. So how we currently manage it is, not just put somebody who has just come out uh, directly in front, have some mentorship programs, especially when it regards to communication. Communication is not just speaking in English. I think that is something everybody misunderstands. It is good listening skills and understanding what is the actual thing that needs to be spoken when. Okay. Somehow that is diluted and it says, okay, I have to speak in English, but that's not the real. Uh, um, being for the soft skill that we are looking at, it is more on how you actually present yourself so that the customer, see your checkbox is have you got someone who is graduated out of your college placed in the company, but really the checkbox or the acceptance criteria is, is he accepted by the customer as somebody as a valued person. So the soft skills or communication really brings down that gap and so Today what we do in the industry is ensure that you know they have a weekly mentorship. You probably face the customer, you talk and everything, but then you also have another meeting where the senior guys talk and get the feedback about the graduates who come in and then put them in the courses, soft skills courses, whether it is interpersonal skills, their emotional skills, because communication is just a broad thing, saying English, but it's, it involves a lot of interpersonal, emotional portion to actually succeed. So, I think that's something that industry should do. Anybody else wants to add? Anybody want to add something? Prakash, you Yeah, I think listen to what I said. Uh, there are a few more things I wanted to call out. One is that to, as, as a beginner, you know, as a student and also even as a, uh, somebody, an employee, the first skill I would say is uh, being open and not to be afraid of failures. Everyone fails, obviously, right? In the industry, of course, I have some 25 years experience. I still don't know a lot of things. I still am, am kind of, you know, overwhelmed by a lot of new developments that's kind of happening. And that applies to everyone, right? I think they're being not afraid, afraid of failures. If something fails, of course, what is the learning coming out of it? You know, that's one thing. Secondly, being open. Uh, open is not just to say, hey, I'm kind of openly able to communicate. It's also about, if I don't know, I'm able to say I don't know. Uh, if I know something, I'm able to share with others that something I, I know, right? I think that kind of things. Uh, the third one is, uh, I think there are many discussions about, uh, hey, you have to learn IoT, Industry 4.0. I think we're always going to see, I think the pace at which the new innovations and uh, concepts, trends are emerging is obviously accelerating. I think while it's, it's important to have a good understanding of what's happening in the industry, what's also more foundationally important is, 
uh, do we know how to learn i think that's more important you know the one thing that i see you know sometimes uh, you know that students missing out is you know oh my god i have to learn this language you know i have to learn machine learning and in fact i come across cases you know some colleges have machine learning as a theoretical subject with no practical thing involved as like how do you do machine learning theoretically you know i mean some of those things are very difficult right uh, but i think the point i'm trying to say is the why behind things you know if hey if we have like uh, for example uh, uh, of course i'm from computer industry so i'm going to take some computer examples if we have hey we are going to have a, a dictionary with order of one uh, you know uh, lookups uh, uh, speed the performance how did they do that why did they do that you know what is what is going behind the scenes right i think that kind of critical thinking is super important uh, and, and for i would say that's more important than learning iot or uh, machine learning and so on because iot is today's trend maybe after 10 years something else will happen so so I, it's not to say I don't learn iot but to me one more important to say is uh, even if you are learning iot going into machine learning or data science or industry for that one so on uh, focusing on the foundations uh, foundational skills the critical thinking going into the why uh, and that would happen if the learning is through socratic way of learning meaning they explore they seek answers and they get the answers even if they fail that's perfectly fine right if something is told to me and if i get into the rote learning of you know memorizing or remembering then my critical thinking does not happen so i think that's one of the critical or we say super important skills if something is required that critical thinking is one one of those very important skills just just want to call it that yeah. actually i had an experience when i was a middle manager that you know we had a strategic project and my manager asked me my senior guy 10 years ago uh, a fresher is coming from germany from bosch not from bosch he's a fresher from college from germany he just passed out you give that project to him i said hey, fresher can't do this project it's a bit strategic project or something like that probably an underestimate i mean i was taken aback with the maturity of the person you know he's just passed out he has not even started working but uh, so i think what we are meaning here by soft skill is just not about like somebody said speaking liquid the overall maturity i know so i think it's the responsibility of the people in this room including us overall if we work on that i think the other things will fall in place and i think we have to do it uh, it's like like somebody said in next 5 to 10 years none of us will be working but i think they will be taking over so they should we should get that because now there's no patience to wait you know people have to you know the technologies are uh, ahead of us kind of so they have to work so i think we have to get this maturity uh, So some more time also we should give. I mean, the government representatives are here for this course. You know, I mean, possibly going back to a five-year course is not a bad thing. Not that you extend the academic studies to five years, but make certain compulsory things uh, and uh, overall spend one year towards that. Like how in Europe they go for the service. You know, you either have to go for an army service or for some other. The, the kind of learning that they get from their maturity is uh, unmatchable. I think we should do something like this, and this also gives. them time to take this course so with this small note thanks to the panelists sorry that you know uh, we couldn't talk to the extent of detail that we had planned but nevertheless thank you very much